Good day, students. In this video, we are going to talk about the surface area of cylinders. So in the previous video, we discussed how we find the area of a surface of a prism. So we looked at a rectangular prism and a triangular prism. Um, today, we're going to talk about a cylinder. So if we had something shaped like a Pringles can um, or something that had this cylinder shape to it, how can we figure out the total area of the surface? So the first thing um, that I want to kind of point out to y'all, so um, there is going to be this three-dimensional kind of area that we're going to look at, but to really understand how we find the surface area of a cylinder, we want to kind of break it down into what's called its net. A net is when we take a three-dimensional object and then we kind of, almost if we if we were to like cut it and then flatten it out, what it would look like. So if you think about like a box, if you get like a package, like an Amazon package or something, when you break down that box, like what does the box look like when it's completely flat in two dimensional versus three dimensional? So this is what the net of a cylinder looks like. And you can see, obviously we have our top and our bottom circles. We can kind of think about them as like the floor and the ceiling, but the lateral area of a cylinder or what we call this like middle, the side of a cylinder is actually going to be a rectangle. If you think about if you were to cut off a label on a Pringles can, or if you've ever peeled off the label on a water bottle, when you unpeel that label and flatten it, it's going to be a rectangle. So the way that we're going to find the surface area of a cylinder is we're going to find the area of these two circles, and then we're going to find the area of this rectangle. And to find the total area, we'll add up all of those areas together, kind of like a composite figure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the area of um, the top and bottom because these two circles should be the same in area because they should be the same size. So if you haven't already taken a moment to pause and copy this down, you can go ahead and um, pause and copy down the example. And then we're going to have a section for top and bottom and then a section towards the bottom for the lateral area or for the um, rectangle. So go ahead and pause for a moment to copy. Okay, so the top and bottom are obviously going to be a circle. And in our example, we have a circle that has a radius of five, according to um, the picture above. So to find the area of this circle, we're just going to use the area formula. So the formula to find the area of a circle is pi times r squared. So in our case, that's going to be pi times five squared which five squared is 25. So this is going to be equivalent to 25 pi, but that's just the area of one of the circles, right? But if I have the top and bottom, if I know they're gonna be the same size, the total area of the circles is just gonna be two times 25 pi. Two times 25 is 50. So this is the same thing as 50 pi. Each of these circles is 25 pi. If I leave it in terms of pi, um, that is going to be the area for each of those circles. So my tip to you when you are doing anything with um, cylinders is to leave your answers in terms of pi until the very end. Because sometimes like, you know, if, if I wanted the final surface area and I wanted you to actually round it by using 3.14 for pi, it's going to make our life a lot easier if we just wait and do that decimal multiplication at the end because we can kind of treat 50 pi, 25 pi, like we can treat them like like terms. Like 25 pi plus uh, another 25 pi is gonna be the same as 25 plus 25 times pi or 50 pi. So you can kind of think about it as if they were like terms. Like if we had 25x and 25x, that makes 50x. So the tip is leave work and that means like your calculations, leave work in terms of pi until the end, okay? Leave your work in terms of pi until the end. So that way you only have to do the decimal multiplication once. You don't have to, but it'll make the math by hand a lot easier. Okay, we officially have the... Um, circle areas. That, that's actually kind of the easy part of this problem. The more challenging part is now we're going to find the lateral area of this cylinder. So I know that the height of this cylinder is going to be seven. So when it comes to this rectangle, that's going to be this right here. Okay. According, you know, if I'm taking from the 3D to the 2D, that's going to be this measurement here of seven. Okay. But to figure out what the length of this rectangle is, I have to think about that 
when I put back, if I was to put back the cylinder together, this rectangle, this measurement right here, this length is wrapped around kind of the perimeter of the circle. And the perimeter of the circle is what we call the circumference. So the measurement of this part of the lateral area of this part of the rectangle is the same as the circumference of the circle. Okay, so that's actually the first thing we need to find when we're finding the surface, this lateral area here, is we need to figure out what is the circumference of the circle, because that's going to tell us this measurement of the rectangle. And then to find this total area of the rectangle, we'll take our circumference amount and multiply it by seven. So that's what we're going to do next. So um, underneath where you have your tip, I have a couple of extra lines. You don't need all those extra lines. Um, you can label this next section the lateral area, because this is going to be the... Um, the lateral area or that rectangle of the circle. So we just discussed how, <clears throat> excuse me, we just discussed how in this rectangle, this is going to be the circumference and this is going to be the height of the cylinder, which is seven. So to find the circumference, um, we're gonna take the parts of the circle we're given and we're gonna use the formula to find the circumference. So circumference is equal to two formulas. We could do diameter times pi, or two pi times the radius. They tell us that the radius is five up above. We use that up above. So the circumference is gonna be two times pi times the radius. And if I were to solve that, that's going to be 10, excuse me, 10 pi. So again, I'm gonna leave this in terms of pi until the very end. So, um, that means that this measurement on our circle is 10 pi. So if I wanted to find the lateral area of the cylinder, I need to find the area of this rectangle. And to find the area of the rectangle, we take our length times our width, which is going to be equivalent in this case to seven times 10 pi. And if I think about this as like 10 X, seven times 10 is going to be 70. So seven times 10 pi is going to be 70 pi. So the area of the lateral area of the cylinder is 70 pi. So if I kind of bring it back up here to our net, this area right here is 70 pi. So to find the total area of this cylinder, I'm gonna take 25 pi plus 70 pi plus another 25 pi to find the total area. So I'm just gonna kind of make a little column over here. And we're just gonna say total area. So we already said the circles, the total area was 50 pi, which is just 25 pi plus 25 pi. So 50 pi plus, and then this rectangle here, 70 pi. Think about these as like terms, 50 plus seven, this is a 70, sorry, it kind of blends into the plus sign. 50 plus 70 is 120, okay? So this is the same thing as 120 pi. So the total area, if we left it in terms of pi, is 120 pi. If we replaced it with 3.14, um, if we did 120 times 3.14, okay? That's going to be equivalent to approximately 376.8. And our uh, units are feet, and this is area, so we're going to put feet squared. So a cylinder is a little bit of a more complex shape to find the surface area for because <clears throat> we have to take a moment to figure out what the length or the circumference is to figure out the total area. So essentially what we did is we found the area of the two circles, top and bottom. Then we found the area of this lateral area of the cylinder, which is the rectangle by taking the circumference because it wraps around the perimeter times the height of the cylinder. We added all three of these up. And at the very end, you see what I'm saying? Like we did not use 3.14 until the very end. And we kind of treated pi as like terms. So we added them all up together and then multiplied by, replaced pi with 3.14 and multiplied it at the very end. So um, this is how you find the surface area of a cylinder. Um, 
this is technically an eighth grade skill, but it's something that might show up on your seventh grade star. It has in the past. Um, so to practice, there's two practice questions um, I'm going to have you do. The first one is, here we go. Um, the first one is that I already tell you what the area of the circle base is. So, um, <clears throat> I tell you like how much one of the circles is. So if I kind of flip back uh, to, I tell you what one of these circles already is. So instead of 25 pi in my practice question example, it's 36 pi. And I tell you that it's going to be, you know, in meters. I tell you what the height of the cylinder is. And I give you kind of this reminder, the area of one of the circles is equivalent to this, which means that R squared is going to be equivalent to 36. So you kind of have to work backwards to find your radius, and then you can kind of find the total surface area. So that's your first question. Um, the second question is I give you kind of a basic sketch, and I tell you the diameter is 10, and then the height is also 10, and you need to find the surface area. So um, please ask your teacher if you are struggling um, or rewatch this video. This might be a video that's worth watching twice, just so that way you understand. Um, check your answers in the table of contents, and then let us know if you have questions. Have a great day, guys. Bye.